Welcome back homebodies. I'm so grateful that you were able to come back for another video. In this video, we're gonna get into the deets on this chandelier. All right, homebodies. Everybody's home, everybody's got a house full. So if you hear my background, background noise just understand we are all in this together okay so I hope that you guys have had an amazing weekend and that you have finally emotionally decompressed because it's been a hectic week okay to say the least and because this is a long awaited thing for myself I am actually really excited to bring this video to you guys today. So I found this particular chandelier. I, I really wanna say I found it between 2016 and 2017, but when I went back through my, my pictures in my phone, it says that I found my first picture of this chandelier was in 2018. Yeah, in 2018. Um, so when I saw this particular chandelier, yeah, September 25th, 2018, so I guess. But when I saw it, I immediately fell in love. Like, let me show, let me see if I can get you guys to see it for what it was in the showroom. Yeah. Now I will have pictures um, in here so that you guys can see it, you know, a better picture than me just showing you on my phone. But when I saw it, I immediately knew it would brighten up my two-story foyer. So, I'll, I'll go ahead and insert some pictures so that you guys can see it the way that I saw it. But when I, when I found this chandelier in the showroom, I immediately knew that it will brighten up my two-story foyer. So the foyer, the house is pretty new. It's relatively new. We're the first owners. Um, we found, well, the builder had already built our floor plan when we found the house. Um, so I knew that I would like coming into the house because I didn't pick any of the finishes that nothing was staying the way, excuse me, the way that I found it. And one of the things that really, I really needed to tie in the upstairs and the downstairs was the chandelier. Now, when you first enter into the house, the house, as you can see, um it's it's a straight shot literally all the way to the family where well, the family room and the kitchen open up and when you look up you can see a balcony you can see a high ledge and then there's the chandelier so when you're look when you're upstairs on the other hand and you're in the the hallway and you see the high ledge you see the chandelier and then you look down and then there's the front door it was a really hard place for me to design because of the way it's laid out in the original floor plan. Um, I needed the two areas to blend seamlessly. I didn't want them to be two separate jagged areas. So with that being said, when I found the chandelier, I knew that it would blend the upstairs and the downstairs so that I could get that cohesive design that I was looking for. So, so with that being said, when I found the chandelier, I knew that it would blend the upstairs and the downstairs so that I could get that cohesive design that I was looking for. So when I initially found it, as you can see, it has brown candle bearers. Now I found it in a local showroom. I did not find it at the Curry and Company showroom, um, but it is a Curry and Company light fixture, excuse me. Um, it is called the Sethos, and I'm trying to remember all the details. Um, it 
it's the large one. They have a large and they have a small, and this particular line has about, I wanna say, one, it has wall sconces, foyer chandeliers, dining chandeliers, if I'm not mistaken. So I wanna say they're about four to six different lights in this particular, um, this particular lunch. But I just knew that, that the large Sethos was exactly what I needed to tie in that two-story foyer. Now, here are some of the pitfalls of this chandelier that I did not take into account when I saw it, found it, bought it, and had it adjusted. Number one was I had no idea that my grandose idea was grand, but all a smidget too grand, okay? Just like a smidget. Now, I knew that whatever chandelier I put in that space needed to be huge. It had to fill up the space visually. It had to be minimal and it needed to have a masculine feel to it because I didn't want to pink out the whole house and make my husband feel like he didn't have, you know, a presence in the house, which I think to a certain extent he still doesn't feel. But um, I knew that with whatever I chose to put in this space needed to fill up the space appropriately. And I did not feel like the smaller Sethos would have done that. Now, here's the pitfall of going larger instead of smaller. There are more freaking lights. So literally, when I turn on the chandelier, it blinds the crap out of everybody, okay? It's bright as heck. And just to give you a consensus of how bright this freaking chandelier is, at night when we turn it on, it's so the light is so clear and so potent to be quite transparent it's it everybody gotta take their glasses off okay so clearly didn't think the original light there only had three bulbs so i think we went from three bulbs to 13 in one swap and then number two was I was thinking that because we have a high ledge right there and the banister, some way, somehow my husband could, you know, fix it to where he could have just installed the chandelier from the high ledge and the banister. Well, that did not happen. It did not materialize in no way, shape or form. In actuality, he had to go and rent a freaking um, scaffolding ladder to get from the second story to the third story, because we are on a basement lot. Um, he did have to do some real construction stuff that I never took into account. So if you caught my video before this one, you see the struggle of the scaffolding ladder. And thank God we planned on redoing the walls anyway because clearly they got dented and scratched up during this installation. So with, with all of that being done, with everything being accounted for, finally, because here's the thing, and me and my husband both had to sit down and talk about it and realize like, this is just something that we both need to work on. My husband is my foreman. He is the construction geek. He's the one that puts together most of what I visualize in my head. Or he tells me what needs to be done in order to get it done. Whereas with me, I visualize it, I see it, I want it, and I'm unwilling and relentless about getting that done. So with this particular project, I never once stopped to consider that there was a 15 foot drop from the balcony upstairs to the floor downstairs. Because anytime that I've needed to clean the high ledge, dust, you know, all that good jazz, 
I was able to do so by literally just getting the ladder we have and just climbing up, doing what I need to do, and calling it a day. So when I told my husband, like, okay, today's the day, we're gonna install the chandelier, his thing was, okay, but did you think about it? And I'm like, yeah, get a ladder, do it. And he's like, no, it's more to it. So one of the things that we definitely had to come to terms with is the way that we go about doing certain projects because in my mind, it's doable. I mean, I mean, you know, these, these are just things that I just think should happen. And in his reality, it's like, okay, so I have to go and rent a truck pick up a scaffolding ladder, bring the scaffolding ladder, build the scaffolding ladder, break the scaffolding, excuse me, install this heavy chandelier, break down the scaffolding ladder, put it back in the truck, and then take it back, take the truck back, and that's a five hour job. And I'm just like, okay, you could have said that. <laughs> How much did this chandelier cost? Um, right now, this chandelier is marketed at about $1,600. Um, let me check and see how much I paid for it because I did have it adjusted, as I said, um, when I bought it. So I bought it from this store called 14th Street Antiques in Bordeaux Art Home here in Atlanta. Um, I, I paid $9.75 for the chandelier and then I paid an additional, I want to say it was like $100 or $60 to get the candle bearers, um, the brown parts where the light is, to get those cut down and changed out um, by the light shop that is inside of the uh, store, the lamp store there. Um, I knew that the brown was not gonna cut it. It just, it was too traditional and I felt like it turned the chandelier into something that I wasn't interested in. So, um, yeah, I did that. I had that done and then I knew off bat that I was not gonna go back with those um, tea lights. I wanna, I, I wanna call them tea lights, but the little polka dotty ones that look like fire. I didn't like that. I knew I was gonna go with a round bulb to uh, play up the contemporary look of the chandelier. Um, if, if, excuse me, if customizing an item like this chandelier is something you're looking to do, I highly suggest you go to a lamp store, not, you know, no shade to anybody, not the at home store, not home goods, pick up the lamp and then try and do it yourself because to be quite transparent, you don't know what the heck you're doing. Especially if you don't have a background in electrical and the last thing you wanna do is put you, you and your family in harm's way because of a, a, a simple mistake, you know, that you just didn't know. So I would definitely suggest uh, a lamp store, a lamp and a lampshade store, going there and asking them because this is what they do all the time. The one that I'm familiar with, I think she's been there for quite a while. I think she was there before um, they changed the management with 14th Street Antiques and she builds lamps all the time. I mean, she's a really, you know, knowledgeable person and I do trust her work because, you know, that whole shindig, but yeah. I have yet to pick out any more light fixtures. I do have a storyboard. I do have some ideas toiling around in here. But at the moment, we're just trying to finish up the walls and paint Jesus. It's, it's been about well past time to paint this house. So I hope that, you know, this video has been informational. I enjoy filming it because this by far took the longest to purchase. Because, okay, when I say purchase, 
it took me a while to say, okay, I'm gonna buy this, this chandelier. Um, I'm not a quick, I'ma go spend, you know, a thousand dollars for no, no, I'm not her. It takes me a while and with me, if I impulsively buy, I'm going to impulsively give away within the first two weeks of me having it. So this was one of those big purchases that I really wanted to think about. I did put it on hold um, and I brought it home. I brought pictures home. I thought about it. Some um, chandelier shops, some, you know, relationships that you build in the, the community of design they do allow you to um, hold particular items where you can take it, bring it in a space for about a week or two, see how you like it, see if you can live with it and then return it. Um, honestly, at that point, I didn't know if I wanted the chandelier as bad as I wanted it. So I didn't want to check out the chandelier, but if that's an option, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely for items over a thousand dollars, ask if you can check it out and then bring it back at a later date. Um, they will require you to either put a credit card on file or leave an open check. Um, so that in the event that you do want to purchase it, they can just fill out, you know, you can either come back in and fill out the check or they can bill against your, you know, your, your business um, account. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I enjoy filming it. I love my chandelier. I love my light. I love all the updates on it. Um, hopefully in the near future, I can plop one of their chandeliers somewhere in the house again because I am just obsessed with Curry and Company. So I hope that you guys have a fantastic day and come back for another video.